We all make choices every single day. For some of us, it's deciding which glorious internship to apply to, which divorce court to take your crappy lover to, or even which flavored syrup to drizzle into a latte. Choices add variety and autonomy to our lives. But sometimes, choices can mean the difference between life or death. And this is especially true for undocumented immigrants. Imagine a little girl, honeyed skin, espresso hair, eyes so bright that they give the sun warmth. Now this little girl walks to school every day, where she's lucky enough to have a scholarship to attend. And despite seeing adults with degrees and good government jobs still failing to meet rent, despite knowing that an education won't get her out of a life of poverty, the girl chooses to try in school. And amazingly, her report cards continuously show perfect scores. And eventually, she has dreams to work with sophisticated mathematics and information systems. But the girl knows that these are dreams that cannot come true. Many systems work in the girl's country together to make it difficult to advance from a life of poverty to a life of comfort. And in the girl's life, these systems are shown in very concrete ways. She often has a few days a week where she goes hungry. She comes home regularly to her father using his palm, if not an iron cable, to show his wife and his children that he's in charge. And this is a violence that seems to burn not only the skin, but the spirit. So it's a lot easier to imagine the girl falling in love. And she falls in love with the man who promises to save her who treats her so sweetly. The man offers her refuge and a home in the city. What does she do? She chooses to leave an environment of domestic abuse to one that glows pink with the promise of a new beginning. Now, after the man gets the girl to move out, he begins to abuse her physically. And when the girl becomes pregnant, he tries to kill her baby. There, she suffers, continuous pushing into walls, downstairs, punches to her abdomen. She was faced with a choice, to stay with a lover who had turned toxic, or to go back and plead to her father to seek out the humanity in himself. You see, her father had a tendency to go at least a couple weeks without abuse before relapsing into violence again. And at her father agreeing to protect her with the claim that it was what a real man would do, she goes back home until she gives birth to me. My mother didn't want me to suffer in the same ways that she had. She did not want me to learn to clean until my bones were stripped from calcium of the calcium from the abrasiveness of the concrete floor. She didn't want me to have to learn to cook until I'd put my dreams into fresh tortillas and pozole. She did not want me to grow up in a place where my intrinsic value had ties to outdated standards of being a good wife. She didn't want me to grow up in a small town where even a good education would not lead to a sustainable income. She was faced with the choice, stay in this rotting reality or do what millions of people have done and go to the United States. She chose to go to the United States. And after her visa request was denied, she chose to cross the border. She spent months saving up enough money to pay a reputable person to get her to the border. Because oftentimes, these coyotes would take migrants' money and leave them stranded in the middle of the desert. So my mother chose to cross the border Something she did not get to choose was how that journey would go. You can imagine my mother, a girl that looks almost exactly like me, at 18, watching as adult men and women drink their own urine to feel warmth on the foodless and waterless journey. You can imagine how scared she must have been when, after three days, 
at, in the desert, bandits on the American side, kidnapped the group that she was with. My mother at 18 almost died. She was held in a strange house, stripped naked, blindfolded, and held at gunpoint until she agreed to wire money to her kidnappers, the money that she had planned to use to settle down in the States. My mother at 18 almost died. In reaching Florida, of all places, she felt so much joy. There she worked for three years until she had enough savings to move to Tennessee and have me join her as a toddler. She was so happy. Now, our first reaction might be to think that the suffering was over, but for people like my mom, immigrants, documented or undocumented, the hardships don't end after you reach America. Within state lines, you're faced with cruelty, not only in the form of ugly nicknames, but in the form of violence from cruel acts from your fellow human beings or in the form of anti-immigrant laws. But we know that anti-immigrant sentiments have been present in America since the early republic and continue to this day. In 2011, Alabama passed the HB 56 Act. And of this act, which was titled Alabama Taxpayer and Citizen Protection Act, Republican leader of the House Mickey Hammond warned the undocumented population that he would make it difficult for them to live here so that they would deport themselves. Now, the act made it a crime to give a ride to, rent a house to, or give a job to, an illegal. Police were allowed and even encouraged to demand citizenship of anyone who looked as if he or she might lack it. And school administrators were asked to do the same to children. After the bill passed, 15,000 undocumented immigrants from Alabama made the choice to move and be displaced because the singular story that was told of them in society led to a dishonoring of themselves and of fear, an instigation of fear from their fellow Americans. Even more recently, executive orders have made it so that men, women, and children not only die in trying to get to America, but die in detainment centers at the border. As generations have moved forward, wrongful portrayals of entire races of people have dimmed the light of the American dream. We are loyal to a land of opportunity, a land of red, white, and blue. But recently, America has bled so much red. We all make choices. One would hope that the hardest choice one has to make is which glorious internship to apply to, which divorce court to take your crappy lover to, or which flavored syrup to drizzle into a latte. But the reality of the world is that people make hard, downright terrifying, life or death choices in trying to better their standard of living. I'd like to ask the people here who have heard my mom's story, what would you do if your partner was threatening your life and the life of your child if you knew that there was no way to advance, even with a good job, from a life of poverty to a life of comfort, but there was a beautiful developed country just a journey away, would you have stayed? Taxonomizing each other as people is easy. Seeing each other across differences and as deserving of the same rights and treatment, now that takes courage. And my biggest hope is that one day, America will be as brave as my mother and all of the choices that she made. Thank you.